For nearly a decade, soccer star David Beckham and his Miami business partner Jorge Mas have worked to get a soccer stadium built in Miami. Right now, they've been negotiating a 99-year no-bid lease to develop the city of Miami's Mel Reese Public Golf Course near MIA into a private soccer, entertainment, and retail complex. Complex being an understatement in Miami terms, and after a number of delays, the commission may or may not keep its date to vote on it this week. And headlining the opposition now is this. Miami is known for sun, fun, and sex. In Miami, you are about to get these five commissioners are voting on the biggest real estate deal in the history of Miami. And if you thought the Marlins Park deal was shitty, wait until you get a load of this. The city wants to give billionaire Jorge Mas, David Beckham, and their inter-Miami soccer team a 99-year no-bid lease below market value on 131 acres of parkland. So filmmaker Billy Corbin, raconteur films, made that mini documentary, and that's kind of right in his wheelhouse. But the narrator, poof, bombshell. <laughs> David Sampson, the former president of the Marlins, largely credited with pulling off the worst stadium deal for Miami-Dade taxpayers in the history of the world. <laughs> so good to have you both. And there they are you on screen right now. Got a lot of explaining to do. Billy, who, well, who recruited who for doing this mini documentary? Talk. Oh, well, I recruited David Sampson. There's no doubt about that. I mean, uh, when Clarice Starling uh, needed help uh, capturing <laughs> Buffalo Bill, she went to Hannibal Lecter. So that's what I did. Put the lotion in the basket. David, <laughs> da I, David, I just want to tell you, one of our colleagues saw you in a deli or something with uh, one of your children and said that you looked like you were a really good dad but you truly were the most hated man in Miami and possibly still are in Miami-Dade. And you know that, and you know, it seems like you're kind of proud of that. Why are you doing this? What, what is your motive for this opposition? Well, I would like the number of the person, first of all, maybe you could call my daughter because if all it takes to be a good dad is to go to a deli and get a schmear, <laughs> then I would say there's a lot of good are, are dads out there. Are you saying you're not? There. I'm saying that I could be better. There's no doubt about that. But a schmear is not the difference maker. So Billy Corbin called me and he said, listen, I have an idea for a script I'm writing. Would you be willing to narrate? a bit about the Mel Reese and the soccer stadium deal. Do you know anything about it? Do you have an opinion about it? And I said, of course, I'd love to work with you, Billy. You're unbelievable at what you do. And it would be in my best interest for people to understand what's going on with this soccer deal because it's so different than the Marlins Park deal. It's so much worse. Billy sent me the script. I made one or two tiny changes that Billy actually accepted, which made me feel like a writer. And then we filmed it, and Billy put together a piece of education in two and a half minutes that has certainly uh, found some eyes. Yeah. Uh, Billy, as you know oh so well, the most cutting criticism is satire and making fun of people, getting people to laugh about your opponent. And, you know, hats off to you. I mean, you have done it with this little clip. Uh, and yet there are people who say, hey, you know, it's not such a bad deal for the city of Miami. They would get six and a half billion dollars in revenue over the course of uh, this lease. W what is your opposition to turning Mel Reese Golf Course uh, into this big complex? Well, first and foremost, the goal was to drag this out of the shady back rooms and into the sunshine where the community could be better informed about what was happening with their property. We can have a more transparent and accountable process, which now it seems that's improving. But the great thing about Miami is that there's so there's something for everyone, right? We have ballpark and a basketball arena, performing arts center, museums, a golf course. None of those things is for everyone, but there's something for all the diverse interests here. And I so I'd love to see a soccer stadium here in Miami, whether I ever go or not. I've never been to Ultra, I never will be, but I'm glad that it's that it's here. And to that end, why don't we give um, Moss and Beckham and Inter Fort Lauderdale the exclusive no-bid access, which they uh, are you know are entitled to by uh, the referendum, right at Mel Reese and and you know to the property that they need for the soccer stadium and reasonable parking. But why don't we then separate out everything else, the hotel, the office park, the retail component, maybe even affordable housing if we're feeling bold and, and useful into individual commercial projects and then put those out 
for bid. Moss and Beckham can certainly participate in that uh, bidding. And that way, the people of Miami who own that property will have a chance to get fair market value through a legitimate competitive process. And that's how free market capitalism uh, works. Not so I, I don't want to, uh, you know, I certainly don't want to speak on behalf of anybody, uh, Beckham, Moss, or anything like that. But having covering, having covered the story, I do know what their answer would likely be is that the entire component is the funding mechanism yeah. for the soccer component. So the, the whole shebang is needed, in, in their words, to, to make it work. But so this has nothing to do point. with soccer then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah David, that's the whole point. That, 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 therefore, it's a real estate deal and not a soccer deal. When we were doing Marlins Park, it was a simply for a ballpark. We didn't have the rights to anything around the ballpark. We weren't buying land in Little Havana at all. And the way to look at this deal, if you are a, a member of Miami or a voter in Miami, how many people are lining up to do the exact deal that Jorge Moss and David Beckham are getting from the city? You've got developers left, right, and center. How many people were lining up to buy the Marlins back in 2002 when John Henry wanted to leave? Nobody locally. How many people were lining up to put their money into a stadium deal, just a unique stadium deal? Nobody. And Jorge Mas would not do a standalone stadium deal and fund it privately because you cannot compete without public funding for your stadium. So the way around it is to say we're building the stadium with private funds, but look, we're getting money over here. Okay, yeah. hold, hold on a second. So if there's no way to fund the stadium without public money, what you did was is cost Miami-Dade taxpayers over the course of probably my children's lifetime, again, no judgment here, but what you did <laughs> really did cost a lot of money that I'm going to venture a guess most voters had no idea was going to come at them, which Five, is why a mayor was recalled. $500 million dollars in bond debt, and then when you pay the interest, and it comes out to roughly a billion dollars. And so why then, what's wrong with getting a private enterprise to take that land and do it on its own instead of bonding something out for generations? I think there's a couple of things you have to keep in mind about Marlins Park deal, and then we'll talk about Mel Reese. Number one, your children will pay for it if, in fact, they stay in hotels in Miami. So they may, so that would be a factor. But it did not come from general funds. It came from an existing tax stream that can only go to ballparks and to convention centers. And that actually comes from Tallahassee. as part. It's part of the legislature. So here in Mel Reese... Here's what we're trying to do and why I said yes and why Billy's so brilliant. We're just trying to get people understanding the issue. And the issue is, is this the best deal that the city can get for that amount of land, not including the soccer stadium? Because I agree with publicly funding and having a partnership to build a sports facility, but I don't believe that the owner of a sports team should have the right to develop the land around it for below market value. Yeah. Billy, I, of course, uh, I, of course, yeah, disagree with, with David Sampson, and I don't want to relitigate Marlins Park, but I think there's a, a I th which I think is the, was the worst deal, sports welfare deal in history at the time before Buffalo <laughs> Bills and now before Mel Reese. But I do want to say there is an important history lesson there. Right now, Miami Commissioner Manolo Reyes is the one person yeah. to do the right thing and stick to his guns. All eyes now are on Commissioner Ken Russell. He is the swing vote here, and he has the power to end this bad deal. And if he doesn't, it will end his political career. Nobody who voted for the Marlins Park boondoggle ever achieved higher office again. And I would remind everyone, and especially Ken Russell, that over 10 years ago, Tomas Regalado was the lone dissenting vote on the Miami City Commission against Marlins Park. And he was elected city mayor because of that. In Miami-Dade County, Mayor Carlos Alvarez, parlay, uh, I'm sorry, he championed Marlins Park, uh, then got recalled for it. Yeah. And then County Commissioner Carlos Jimenez parlayed his opposition to the deal right into the county mayor's office for 10 years yeah. and then the oh, United that's... States Congress. So Billy, history proves yeah. that if Ken Russell supports this public uh, sports welfare, public land grab, his aspirations for higher office yeah. are over and Ken Russell will be finished. Yeah, well, let's point out, as you were really saying, it takes four yes votes to make the deal work and they may or not vote on Thursday. I know Glenna and I have been down there numerous times <laughs> when they were supposed to vote and they've never voted. So we'll see what happens on Thursday. Sit tight. Break time. We'll be back in two. <laughs> Welcome back. We are having a very lively, robust conversation, as you would expect, with Billy Corbin, filmmaker extraordinaire, 537 votes, the U and many others, and David Sampson, 
who was the president of uh, the Marlins. And we should point out, point out for anybody who is saying, where is a voice in favor of the Miami Freedom Park deal? Well, I think Lena and I would say David Beckham, Jorge Mas have all been on this program. Mayor Francis Suarez, they've all given their reasons why they support it. So it's not exactly a one-sided deal. The uh, Billy, the uh, Inter Miami, the soccer club, did issue a statement and it said, I'll just read a bit, Miami Freedom Park is a 100% privately funded project that would create the single largest park in the city of Miami. But, you know, it, we're not talking about a park, you know, just a big green space. I mean, there would be soccer fields, however, in addition to the soccer stadium. The vast majority of that 131 acres, though, is going to be paved over uh, with concrete. That's just a fact. And I saw their uh, their infographic, uh, and I'm a big fan of science fiction, so I read it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, some of it is just manipulated uh, economic impact studies, which you can ask any legitimate economist will tell you is pie in the sky nonsense. And the rest of it is four year old uh, statistics that are either half truths, uh, outright lies, or one has to wonder why isn't the deal better now in 2022 than it was in uh, 2018. You have to remember that in the first week of January of this year, uh, Mayor Ponzi Postalita, Francis Suarez, came out to the press and said, the deal is done, it's good to go, and it is the best deal for the city. Well, that was in January. What was the rent back then? Just this week, in response to our mini documentary, uh, Francis uh, said, well, of course, we're going to do a reassessment of the property to reevaluate the rent. Well, when? The vote is on Thursday. And you said three months ago that this was the best deal. So this guy, you know, Francis Suarez, as in the words of Manolo Reyes, he is wearing an inter-Miami jersey in this deal, not a city of Miami jersey in this deal. And he is working as the private personal realtor to uh, Jorge Moss and David Beckham. Uh, when and, we and were negotiating... Record. I'm, I'm sorry, when we were negotiating the stadium deal, we had a bunch of voices like Billy Corbin's or like Norman Brayman's, and they were making a lot of noise, some including lawsuits, and we only felt we had to respond if we still needed votes in the county commission or city commission, and we didn't feel, we, we felt we had the votes because we felt it was a good deal, both sides did, so we never would have responded the way Inter-Miami did, so by them responding, that means to me that they do not yet have that fourth vote. Well, actually, I think they responded as an answer to a question for yeah. response rather than just yeah. say no comment. I don't think they just came yeah. out on their own, to your point, and said anything. But no, but, the, but, they, but they've also refused and turned down interviews to be cross-examined on any of those talking points from their infographic. They haven't appeared live. They've just been sort of texting people behind the scenes, but don't actually want to address the issues. And I would say it doesn't matter what's in our two minute mini doc and it doesn't matter what's on their sci fi infographic. It just matters what's in the contract. And that that's what it comes down to. And and I don't begrudge Jorge Moss and David Beckham and Interfort Lauderdale for wanting to negotiate the best possible deal for their side. That's their job is to make money for them. They're not they're not do gooders. They're not a nonprofit. They're not a charity. They want to make the most money that they can make. My concern is who is sitting on our side of the table, who yeah. is actually representing mm -hmm. the taxpayers and is qualified to negotiate the biggest real estate deal in Miami history. So so that's a very interesting point. And, and David, there are, in this lease that was sort of put out, some people got it, it's not on the website of the city yet. So it's not a, an official public document, but it is available to the public for anyone who wanted to see it, is this framework for the lease agreement that was supposed to be in front of the, the city commission now uh, three or four times, and maybe this week it will be. But in, in that, Along with uh, that comes a memo from the city's own attorneys that identified 28 issues, problems with this lease deal uh, that the city's own attorneys are telling the commissioners about to vote on it are there. Uh, I frankly, and I'm not sure I know anyone who has, figured out what all 28 are and whether they've been addressed. But, but speaking from, from someone in your position who's been there, done that, if 28 issues in a 99-year in a lease agreement were not figured out, how on earth does this go to a vote on Thursday? So 28 is actually a pretty low number. Our issues list was often in the hundreds over the years. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're going back and forth from the, at the time it was the either the city manager or the county manager to the commissioners, always one at a time because you never wanted to meet in the sunshine, as Billy would say. And you're going through issues that matter to the commissioners. And the question is, what will it take to get you to a yes? 
with a commissioner like Tomas Regalado, there was nothing you could put in there, so there aren't a lot of meetings that take place. But when there are commissioners who are on the fence, you go through the issues list and you say, okay, are you a yes if we go to this place or that place with these issues? Then you go back and negotiate with Moss's team and with Beckham's team, and that back and forth continues. But what you see in the final document, that's gonna be summarized for the commissioners, but at the end of the day, the devil is actually in the details of the executed agreement. Mm -hmm. Well, the executed agreement apparently is so complex, so big, that that's the way, that's the reason why they've had to postpone any kind of a vote because lawyers on both sides, you know, have said we're not finished with it and we'll see. These commissioners, these commissioners are going to vote on it without ever having read it or understood it. Are you sure? After, after this documentary, you don't think they're, no. I, listen, <laughs> they're sitting I, I at think their dining I, room table going through it with a fine What are they going to get it Wednesday uh, night? I, I, uh, yeah, I think I think, you know, I think they have three votes and I think this is all on Ken Russell's shoulders and he has to make a decision about his fate and his political future. So can I just uh, I, I'm not sure we have it to put up, but at the end of this two minute mini documentary, you say call the commissioners and that and there's a number that's Ken Russell's number. Oh, I didn't I hadn't noticed that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, the, the, the pitfalls <laughs> of being a, of being a swing vote. It's my understanding that his office got quite a few calls about this telling Ken Russell not to bend over for Beckham. Yeah. Uh, David, um, I've known you for years. Uh, I find you kind of a charmingly pugnacious guy. Uh, I like going around and around exactly. with you exactly. when uh, you and your former, you know, father-in-law were running the Marlins. Uh, what's the reaction been around your neighborhood or with your friends for you appearing in Billy's uh, documentary here? Well, I have a show on CBS called Nothing Personal with David Sampson. It's a daily show where I talk about sports and culture and politics yeah. and anything else I want to. And I've spoken about stadium issues before. And my whole point with the show, and it's my point here with Miami and with this mini doc, is to educate people, to get people to read, to listen, to learn, to watch your show, actually, so they can understand what's going on. Because people in the private sector tend to take advantage of those who are ignorant, not because they're not smart, because yeah. they don't know where to look or what to look for and in my position now I can show people where to look and how to look and well, Billy is perfect at communicating that message well gentlemen we really appreciate you and uh, we'll see what happens if indeed they vote this week uh, Billy David thanks very much great to have you both see you guys